y'all. Welcome to Miss Clark's chemistry class. This is the fourth lesson in a series of lessons on acids and bases. This lesson is going to be the strength. What makes a strong acid a strong acid? What makes a strong base a strong base? Unfortunately, you're going to have to memorize these. Get your periodic table, get your notes, and let's get started. Let's go ahead and talk about how that is. Like what makes a strong acid a strong acid? And some properties of strong acids and bases. Okay, so strong acids and bases, that reaction is going, to is going to proceed forward. In a previous lesson, we talked about equilibrium. We talked about how reactions are reversible. If you have a strong acid in a reaction, that reaction is going to proceed forward towards the products. So the forward reaction is predominant. If you have strong acid, you dissolve it in water, it's going to completely disassociate. Strong acids completely transfer their proton, meaning they're going to completely disassociate. So the reaction is going to proceed toward the products. The protons are completely transferred, which means they're completely disassociating in solution. When you have a strong acid or a strong base, its conjugate is going to be weak. Okay, so let's talk about weak acids and bases. For weak acids and bases, the reverse reaction actually is predominant. The reactants are favored over the products. And so when you mix these in a solution, when you make a solution, if you dissolve these in water, since the reverse predominates and then we favor the reactants, you're gonna have a mixture of the acid or base molecule and its ions because they do not completely disassociate. And so if we had a solution, let's just draw the speaker. If we had a beaker and let's fill it up with water. So if we pour in that weak acid, it's going to disassociate. Let's say here is our hydrogen portion and here is the other portion. You know, like if we had HCl, but HCl, it's a strong acid, so that's not a good word. That was not a good one to say. So what we would have in our solution, we would have some hydrogens disassociate, which means we would also have the anion disassociate, but we're also going to have a lot of these molecules staying together. So we are going to have some disassociation. Here's we've got some individual ions floating around, but we're also going to have the acid or base molecule not completely disassociating. So some of them will disassociate, some of them will not disassociate. And that's what I mean here by saying that it's going to exist as a mixture of your acid or base, whichever one we're talking about, and ions. This is a mixture of the molecule itself staying intact, not disassociating, and then some that actually did disassociate. For a weak acid or base, that means they have a strong conjugate. There's really no easy way to say, here's a rule. If this happens, it's a strong acid because you can't really put acid in water and then look at it and say, oh yeah, look, they completely disassociated. I see that. You can't see that. So you just have to memorize this list. You do. But let me give you a little tip on making the memorization a little bit easier. These are all halogens, but not fluorine. Halogens, when they're in an acid, except for fluorine, are going to make a strong acid. So we've got chlorine, bromine, and iodine. And then these polyatomic ions, you're just going to have to memorize these. That's just all there is to it. And you really do need to identify strong acids and strong bases. So speaking of strong bases, there is many more strong bases. Now, strong bases are easier to memorize because if, and I grouped them like this on purpose, all of these bases over here, their metals come from group one. These are all alkali metals. So all of group one, when it's connected with hydroxide, strong base. These are alkali earth metals. They're group two, except beryllium and magnesium. Those are the top two. So after the top two, the rest of the alkali earth metals are strong bases. I think the strong bases are much easier to memorize because it's group one and group two metals. A tip that will help you with identifying strong and weak acids and bases, the stronger the acid, the weaker the conjugate base. Remember, they're a pair. The acid, if it's really strong, its conjugate base is going to be weak. That same thing happens with bases. The stronger the base, the weaker the conjugate acid. So if you had a weak acid, it would make a strong conjugate base. The opposite is true here, the flip-flop. Or if you had a weak base, it's conjugate acid, that's going to be pretty strong. Okay, so you might be asked questions about which base is stronger. This first example, pretty easy because this is a group one metal. So, duh, sodium hydroxide, the stronger base. But when we're looking here, we're like, well, pff, I don't know. It doesn't even have hydroxide with it. Like, how am I supposed to know that? That's because it's its conjugate. Let's think about the conjugates. So, 
fluorine's ion, its conjugate acid would be hydrofluoric acid. And I, if we find its conjugate acid, that is going to be hydroiodic acid. Um, this one was on our strength list. This is a stronger acid. So remember, the stronger the acid, the weaker the base would be. This is conjugate, and since it came from a strong acid, that means it's going to be a weaker base. And since we're asking for the stronger base, it's got to be this one. So sometimes you kind of have to think around a problem. You can't just look at it straightforward. I think I've got one more of these examples. So which base is weaker? And dang it, I had to look at this, make sure this wasn't the exact same thing. I thought I'd made a mistake, but no. We've got bisulfate, bisulfite. Now, if we're trying to figure out which base is weaker, again, we're like, does not have OH. That is not on my strong or weak base list. So you gotta think around the problem again. Let's look at its conjugate. H2SO4 and H2SO3. This one is on our strong acid list. This is a stronger acid. This is the weaker acid. So knowing that a strong acid gives a weaker base, this one's going to be the weaker base. This one's going to be the stronger base. So since we're looking for weak, this one is going to win. That wasn't too bad, right? There's really not that much to it. But like I said before, you're gonna have to memorize it. Have you been watching all of these lessons on acids and bases? If you have not, it's because you have not subscribed. Make sure and go press that subscribe button. And if you're finding these videos helpful, go ahead and press that like button too. All right, keep up. If you're looking for the math, there is math when it comes to acids and bases. And if you're waiting for that lesson, it's next. So go ahead and check that out. Until then, bye y'all.